why would we use VBT then? So again, not an exhaustive list, but these are some of the reasons that you know you, you would want to invest into it and in, in both terms of currency and your time. So you've got understanding intensity. So this was one of the biggest things for me when it came to investing in the technology because it was really important that our guys understood what was fast and what was slow. So what we struggled with to begin with, with, with our group was they didn't really understand the true slowness of a strength lift, if that makes sense. Um, so we had guys lifting at 0 0.6, 0 0.7 meters per second, and, and they would deem that as heavy. And we had to sort of educate them on, on what a true strength lift was, for example. Um, and that was one of the biggest things um, when we sort of first invested. Um, so being able to quantify from their perspective what is fast and what is slow um, and how that fits into their given training sessions. So competition, obviously team athletes love to compete, um, give, give them the ability to compete against each other and they will do that every day of the week. Obviously they do that every day of the week within their, within their uh, team training as it is. Um, but, you know, being able to quantify what they're doing and then group them into sort of uh, similar capabilities then it really drives competition and, and essentially that drives output which is what we want and then it's sort of monitoring and auto regulation so do we want to be testing nowadays with the amount of tech that we have i'm, I'm not 100 percent sure we do why would we want to detract more time from what's really important which is the, the tech tac team training um so it, it's really important that anything that we can monitor as we train that we do so and we do so in, in a way that we're going to be able to understand what is happening to that individual um, from an acute perspective and from a chronic perspective in terms of um, improvements decrements freshness fatigue um, so another great reason to, to implement possibly based training performance outputs so you know we as strength and conditioners we love objectiveness um, you know, I think anything that's subject is makes us a bit nervous. <laughs> so anything that has the capability to objectify what we're doing, whether that's right or wrong, we can show an improvement or a decrement. Um, now, obviously, something as complex as football, that doesn't directly mean we're making them a better player. What it does mean is potentially that we're making them a bit more robust or a bit stronger or a bit quicker um, or whatever it is we're directly looking to sort of adapt. Um, within their training programs. That's positive and negative, you know, like we need to be transparent. So if somebody's getting the work, gotten worse over a block of training, then we need, we need to be able to quantify that so we don't then lump them with that block of training again. Intrigue, so traditionally, obviously footballers, they're, they're not the most um, intrigued guys when they come into a gym, uh, traditionally. Obviously that's starting to change now. And with the sort of influx of tech, obviously the tech generation, adapt quite well to that um and, the, and they they're very intrigued with their data what's going on how are they comparing to other people how it's improving um and that all comes back to transparency and and, and again that's a that's a big driver of your program and then estimations so you know not all guys are going to be technically competent enough to sort of lift one two three rms uh, regularly um so being able to to estimate their their rep maxes from sort of sub maximal tests um, is a big uh, is a big plus for a lot of the systems, um, and it gives you the capability to do so without you know potentially damaging any other players, um, whether that be a technical decrement or a fatigue decrement. 